everyone, and welcome to our first ever virtual Catella Talks. Wherever you're watching from, we're so glad you can join us. My name is Denise Martinez. And my name is Paris Crockett, and we'll be your hosts for today. During this broadcast, you will see several different presentations and documentaries by students on a variety of different topics that were selected by their peers. While things looked a little different for Catella students this year, we still had a lot to share with you, and we're very excited to share their presentations with you today. Now, let's begin our presentation, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Today, we are hosting Catella Talks. This event showcases students from each grade level presenting on a problem they would like to solve within their community, major, or career interest. These talks are student-driven, student-led, and student-produced. Students can choose topics that are personal and that they are passionate about. They choose which student presentations should be showcased, and they are shooting and editing each presentation in a TED Talk format. We hope these talks lead to exciting conversation, curiosity, skepticism, openness, critical thinking, and action. And now, let's begin. It is my pleasure to introduce the first presenter. From the class of 2022, Rosalind Gomez. What is being beautiful? In society, we are presented several ideals of ways that a person should look. It's physically impossible. The beauty standards targeted on women nowadays are driven in a way that cannot be achieved due to constant change. We assume this is what beauty is. In fact, we don't. The media is what feeds and brainwashes us into believing that this is what the only way of being beautiful is. My name is Rosalind Gomez and I'm here to present to you the ugly truth behind beauty standards. What if confidence, contentment, and gratitude is what we filled our bodies and minds with? Women have at least 13 negative thoughts about themselves a day. Imagine how different society would be if those negative thoughts were switched to positives. It's no question that the media makes women think less of themselves. Thanks to social media platforms like Instagram, magazines, and TV advertisements, women have become more accustomed to an extremely unrealistic uniform standard of beauty. The standard of beauty is constantly changing. In the past, being skinny was the ultimate goal. A few years later, if you were skinny, you needed to gain some weight to match the standard of beauty. In the early 2000s, having a slim figure was heavily influenced by Victoria's Secret models and trending celebrities at the time. In today's times, the beauty standard presented to us is having a slim face, flawless skin, no signs of aging, and a tall hourglass figure. We question, why is the beauty standard constantly changing? A simple answer to this question is that it's a form of marketing. The beauty industry is extremely profitable and it targets women, especially teens, to purchase products when a new beauty standard is set. It becomes a cycle. And this cycle of changing yourself to fit a certain role is extremely toxic. It makes these individuals feel as if they are more accepted into society when they feel they've met the beauty standard. In reality, it just becomes more unattainable due to the cycle and it just becomes a real for the industry's profit when you continue to purchase these products. Makeup or fashion trends are not the issue here. The issue here is that Promoting bodies to a certain ideal and trying to have that look is extremely toxic and it creates insecurities for people who may not look that way. It creates likelihood for body dysmorphia, low self-esteem, low self-worth, and eating disorders. Influencers, runway models, and celebrities have their audience have a desire to have a perfect look just like them. A solution is to have fashion companies, runways, and social media to have more of a diverse representation of the people who are modeling these products. It creates business for these companies in a positive and impactful way, and it gets rid of low self-worth and low self-esteem. Times are changing, and in society we are hungry for more representation of gender identity, race, ethnicity, culture, and attainable beauty standards. Thank you. The process that led to these talks started with the English department using the project-based learning model as a foundation, which included four steps. Step 1. The driving question is where everything begins. The driving question creates interest or a sense of challenge for students and guides the project work. 
For this project, we adopted a question from the common application that many students reply to when applying for colleges across the nation. What is a problem you would like to solve within your major, career interest, or community? This question allows for anything that is of personal interest, big or small, no matter the scale, and students began by replying to this question in writing. Step 2. The research or inquiry step engages students in a rigorous, extended process of asking questions, finding resources, and applying information to create a more personal and tailored driving question and research that question. Step 3. Critical Friends Protocol allows students to give, receive, and use feedback to improve their process and product. Step 4. The gallery walk and presentation is the final step when students make their project work public by explaining, displaying, and or presenting it to others. The presenters today were chosen by their fellow classmates at each grade level to present to you today. This year, students also created short documentaries based off of their Catella Talks. Please welcome our first documentary, March 13th, by Brian Lee. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. About 6.1 million children are now no longer in school. The Person County school system is closing in-person learning. School districts across the county are closing. Many schools around the world, as you know, have shut down, some for extended periods of time as this virus spreads. So I regret to have to announce that as of tomorrow, our public schools will be closed. Effective Monday, March 16th, we will close all Los Angeles Unified Public Schools for two weeks. Governor Whitmer has announced the closure, as we mentioned, of all schools K-12. Schools will be closed. All student activities will be canceled. March 13th. March 13th. March 13th. March 13th. You know, colleges are shutting down, so many things are shutting down, and that's when I realized, okay, so this, you know, co coronavirus thing is actually very serious. Probably the first few days or four or five days, there were so many memes circulating on the internet, and so that's why it was uplifting in a way that there were so many jokes about it. It was the day that we were told that school was online. You know, I didn't really know a lot about COVID-19. I wasn't really big on the news. I remember everyone was like laughing and making jokes because it was March 13th and it was raining on that day. It was really bad rain too. Was excited that we're moving to distance learning. When we were given an announcement that we were not coming back for two weeks, a lot of kids were happy, but at the same time, you know, we were like wondering, like, is this going to really last for two weeks? I honestly thought that it would last longer than two weeks and especially last longer than a single year. In fact, I thought that it would last like roughly five years. I thought it would last probably a month, but then after that four to five days initially, not even a week into our spring break, I realized, yeah, this is not gonna end anytime soon. The pandemic has really affected my learning. Online learning has not been very great. Then it wasn't until 12th grade, that's when we're doing college applications. We're trying to build up our resumes for college. We're trying to do a lot of things. That's when it really hit, like the, my mental health was not good at all. The main problem that I had when regarding my mental and physical health is just handling the workload regarding, uh, regarding school because as we stay home for longer periods of time, in distance learning, I start to feel not as motivated to do my work. Mentally, however, I did like suffer. I remember being inside my room so many hours of the day doing homework because not only are the classes online, all the classwork is on the computer as well. It's rarely that we do written work. I think we really need to have conversations with students and the administration to understand that, you know, we're going through things and this pandemic is not helping. Definitely listen to students' concerns as well as parents, because parents obviously want what's best for their children, but the children are the ones who are going to school and they're the ones who experience it every day. And so I would like to suggest to first for the school district to take a more active approach regarding mental health. 
being online has definitely made it easier for me. However, the biggest downside to that is that I feel like I'm not really learning anything. I would rather go back to school and get mediocre grades, but learn something and be in the classroom and interacting with my friends, my peers, my teachers, and my mentors. I would jeopardize my grades for that because I think the human interaction is so important. Please welcome our next presenter from the class of 2022, Cade Thomas. Hello, my name is Cade Thomas, and today I would like to talk to you about stress and why you should really worry about it more than you think. So I know you've heard before that stress is part of life, everybody's gone through some type of stress, whether, oh no, I forgot to study for my test, or you're nervous about your first job interview. All those types of stress are normal and that happens in day-to-day -day life and that kind of makes us part of who we are. We worry about things, we want to prepare, we want to find the simplest way to resolve a solution. And I can tell you from personal experience, I haven't been the best when it comes to handling stress, but I can tell you with practice in learning how to control my emotions, stress is something you can really handle. However, while there are some normal day-to-day -day stresses that come, a lot recently some more outside stressors or factors that cause stress have become very popular and a number of articles and studies have been taken on them. One of the most common ones is during this lockdown, I know it might be difficult for everyone being stuck at home and I can tell you from personal experience, I went stir crazy from being stuck at home for so long. So that type of stress when it comes to the pandemic is fairly in this scenario normal and I can understand that but some stresses people fail to realize in other people's situations is they might not have an easier home life than somebody else. They might not have a good internet connection and they might not have the best relation for their family. So that might cause a lot of added stress that they might not have least have. And school might have been their escape. So that kind of puts a lot more pressure on them. And when it comes to students, it's not the simple fact of, oh, I have to achieve a 4.0 or something like that. There's different types of stress for different types of students. However, on the topic of students, there's another type of stress people don't really realize, but is very, very, not only is it very common, but it has a number of wide ranging effects. And this is social media. I can tell you, I, be, I will be on my phones hours on, the, hours on end watching videos, whatever. However, certain social media apps such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and stuff like that, very influential social medias have a lot of negative effects, especially on those younger viewers and the younger users. I can tell you when I was younger, people were just trying to get Facebooks. And when I was in middle school, it was Snapchat that was the new fad. However, while this does create more connectivity with people, what people fail to realize is all these filters, popularity, it's just one big popularity contest. So this will cause students to stress and become worried over how many likes or how pretty or handsome they look in a photo while what this is doing for the companies themselves that they don't realize is they, they're making the, the apps more addicting so they want they want you to worry about how, the, how you look because that'll allow the ads to be targeted directly at you. That stress that they place on you to get a certain amount of likes or have a certain amount of followers or popularity is all part of their plan just to make money. So some things I would recommend when it comes to stress is stress is something we all go through and we all can, some people think they have different ways to cope with it. Some of the things that I recommend personally is exercise. I know that might not be easy for everyone, especially in this time, but try taking a walk every now and then. Go outside, take a breath of air, like play with your dog or something. Some other things that I found that really helped me decompress besides reading a book or reading some poetry is do simple tasks like I build I build small models of things or do some gardening or do something that makes you feel happy because not only does that help you decompress, but studies have found that 
Relaxing activities can reduce blood pressure and prevent chances of a heart attack and other mental issues such as depression, anxiety, stuff like that. So the next time you feel stressed or panic, kind of t take a deep breath and kind of relax. But before I close, I wanna bring up why, the, why stress is so important to me. That ever since I was young, like I said, stress hasn't been easy. I would break down, I would cry, and it took me a long time to really keep my stress together. But for some people, they don't have that natural ability, and it takes a lot out of them when they get really worked up. And sometimes, even if you try to help, you can only make it worse. So overall, Keep in mind that stress, while it might seem like a minor thing if it's a test or something, don't let it become bigger than you should because only worry makes things worse. So stress is something you shouldn't necessarily stress about, but always keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Cade. And now for our second documentary, Not Like Other Girls by Melanie Vo. The most common trope in any coming-of-age film or novel usually surrounds a young female protagonist who does not fit in with any of the other girls at school and labels herself as, quote, different because she isn't popular, doesn't enjoy girly things like fashion or makeup, and reads books for fun. These traits are usually what make the male love interest pay attention to her because she's not like the other girls, quote unquote, implying that the other girls who partake in hobbies that are stereotyped to be more feminine are undesirable. This mindset is extremely toxic, despite being embedded in the minds of young girls through books, movies, and television. It pits women against one another and degrades girls who choose to embrace their femininity. Growing up, I was one of those girls, poking fun at the girly girls who wore an excessive amount of pink and obsessed over boy bands and fashion. In my attempts at pursuing individuality, I was just closing myself off to hobbies and interests that I could have potentially been very interested in. Looking at who I am now, a high school cheerleader who enjoys makeup, fashion, and especially boy bands, my younger self would gawk at the sight of me and be absolutely stunned by how happy all of these girly things make me. I think we really do underestimate the influence that movies, television, and books have on our society. The pretty dumb blonde girl in movies is so overplayed as well as the mean cheerleader, and we really need more books and movies in the media that stop associating beauty with lack of intelligence. And I know that there are plenty of other girls my age who feel the exact same way. For this reason, I've interviewed Priscilla Fuentes in order to gather some of her thoughts. Hello, my name is Priscilla Fuentes. I am currently in the Catella dance team. I would consider myself a girly girl. I love to sit around, do makeup, and I love dressing up with heels and all the very typical girly things. Especially like in middle school, I like I said, um, I've always liked girly things. And but when I got to middle school, I hung around a lot of people who didn't. So I would always be like, oh yes, like, like makeup, you know, like why would you wear that and all that. But like now, I don't hang out with those people anymore, and I do find myself to be more happy with who I am because I choose not to be like that. Anymore. watching like films that show like guys picking a girl who's different and then like she's some for some reason better than the girl who's popular or very girly and if you're popular or girly you're considered like the mean girl and I think us girls we grew up and we we're like oh like no we want to be like and we want to be we want people to like us we want to be people pleasers because as humans it's in everyone's human nature to want to please people The first film that I looked and I, I saw when I was young and I realized like I should not be like afraid to be who I am and it's okay if I'm like very early was uh, Legally Blonde, Elle Woods, I love her and also um, Cher from Clueless and then as I continued watching more like empowering women um, I grew up to love Blair Waldorf from Gossip Girl and also Moana from the movie Moana and Hermione from Harry Potter. Elle Woods from Legally Blonde is a perfect example of the kind of strong and feminine role models we need more of. Her character throughout the film is known to enjoy getting her nails done and is extremely invested in pink clothing and high heels. She is constantly overlooked as the dumb blonde, but she goes on to disprove everyone who doubts her time and time again by getting accepted into Harvard, acquiring an internship, and becoming a top law student. She refuses to allow people's low opinions of her keep her from continuously succeeding and remains true to herself through it all with her trend-setting outfits that still continue to influence today's fashion. 
We need more strong female characters like Elle Woods, who prove that having an interest in feminine things should not prevent women from being taken seriously as intelligent individuals. With all this being said, girls who genuinely enjoy partaking in more male-associated activities and interests are also no less feminine than girls who decide to exclusively wear pink and enjoy shopping on weekends. Although our interests are a huge part of who we are as people, they do not define us. However, we need to stop pitting women against one another simply for indulging in things that make us happy. As women, we should not be ashamed of being grouped with the other girls, because the other girls are strong and accomplished females. They are CEOs, mothers, friends, and sisters that we see every day. Saying you're not like the other girls with a negative connotation as a means of pursuing individuality and desperately trying to stand out amongst other women only really prevents us from recognizing how amazing other women truly are. Please welcome our next presenter from the class of 2022, Brisella Zamora. Education. This system may be the only way out for some students out of struggle, out of poverty, and help them obtain the lifestyle they are trying to achieve. Many students within the AUHSD are serious about their education and want to succeed. An immense amount of them strive by challenging themselves in rigorous courses such as honors, AP, and IB courses. What the AUHSD doesn't offer is the same foundation for success for students. An example of this, of this would be Kennedy High School. They are the only school in the district that offers the International Baccalaureate program for students. Why doesn't anyone else? A lot of students are not aware of the educational career pathways and programs that they can take. And those who are, such as myself, have noticed how we don't all have the same programs such like other students, other schools. In my opinion, I firmly believe that this is unfair because there are in a large amount of students who are incredible and talented that are limited in their options due to this issue. It's time to cultivate a solution for this. People may differ and believe that this is not a problem. However, this may affect the outcomes of student education. In a research brochure provided by the International Baccalaureate website, I observed that 38% of the students who take the International Baccalaureate program result in getting their, their bachelor's degree six years in under six years. This is just one part of the issue of not offering the same courses and programs throughout the district. The average school in the AOHSD has about eight programs, but I do not understand why other schools have more than the, the, than the average school. If the school cannot provide it during school hours, then maybe they can try to provide them before, after, and even expand their online courses. Is Catella High School ready to tackle on the International Baccalaureate Program? Well, statistics by the Education Data Partnership show that in the years between 2018 and 2019, 408 students took the AP test. Out of the 408 students who took the AP test, 312 resulted in a three in or higher. If we compare Catella scores to Kennedy scores, they're not drastic, that's drastically different. 536 students at Kennedy took AP tests, and out of those students, 339 resulted in threes. This raises the question, what qualities does Kennedy possess that Catella doesn't? In conclusion, the Anaheim Union High School District should offer the same foundation for success to every school for every student. It is imperative for students to be aware of these educational opportunities. In my op opinion, I believe that every student should have the opportunity to take charge of their education, and they can do this by furthering, and furthering their knowledge and engaging in these opportunities and programs and courses. These classes and courses can offer educational success and future success in their endeavors. These are the future leaders of the generation and they need to be well prepared for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Brisella. Now, please welcome our last documentary, Mental Health During COVID-19 by Brenda Alvarez.
Hi guys, my name is Brenda Alvarez. Ever since the beginning of the pandemic, I believe that a lot of us could admit that our days have looked a little bit more gloomy ever since. And for many people, these gloomy days could lead to mental health disorders such as depression, anxiety, etc, etc. How important do you think mental health is and how informed are you on mental health? Uh, I, in my opinion, I think mental health is very important. Obviously, it helps you. If it's not good, it can't let you work properly or yeah, sometimes it does or it stops you from doing stuff. I think on a scale of 1 to 10, mental health is important as a 10. And I think informed-wise, I think I'm like in the middle of the way that someone should be informed. I don't think I'm completely in the dark of mental healthness, but I don't think I'm an expert on it. It is really important to take care of it uh, when you see uh, people, your kids uh, or yourself stressing out or um, change of moods. You need to look for help and look for a therapist to help assist you and help your family and your, yourself. How would you say that this pandemic has mentally affected your way of living? I think before, like we were in a pandemic, I was always constantly doing something. So I never really had time to like sit with my thoughts and like really like pay attention to what my mind was saying and like was thinking about. I would say uh, kind of negatively because I, I love to see my friends. I feel like my friends give me positive energy and they help me like be a little more happy. And now that with the pandemic and everything, I can't see them that often and often anymore. So it's, it's taken a toll on my mental health and just like in general, and I can't really see anybody. So it's hard to communicate and everything. So I'm just by myself sometimes. So. Since the start of the pandemic, people have had to adjust to a totally different way of life. But it's important to check in on yourself and acknowledge when you need help. Why do you believe that some people struggling with mental health disorders have trouble seeking for help? Because they're scared. Um, they're scared to go with a therapist. Uh, I feel like it's just because people don't know a lot about it. Like how I told you earlier, I don't, I only know the general stuff. I believe people struggle seeking for help to have mental health disorders because sometimes some mental health disorders are disguised as like everyday struggles. So some people don't notice that they're going through something. They assume that it's like a normal thing that everyone goes through. Although many more people are now suffering from some sort of mental health disorder, you may not notice it because they aren't seeking for help. And making sure that they seek out for help has got to be one of the most important things. Being in your own dark world is one of the worst feelings and it brings you down quite a lot. Many people don't seek for help for many reasons. There are multiple reasons, either because they're scared, they have no one to open up to, they don't know how to open up to, and there's many, many reasons. While still taking safety precautions, what interests and activities do you do to help keep a positive mindset? Um, well, I still like talk to my friends, maybe through phone call. Um, if I do have a day off where I can go out, I'll go out for a few hours, not the whole day, obviously, with my mask and everything, and maybe go outside or something so i enjoy reading um i'm currently reading right now i have it actually by myself it's um think like a feminist and i think having a book or something to read is a good way especially since we're a generation that lives off of social media so taking some time off any electronic device especially now that we have school on um, online and we're on the screen even longer than before having some time to take um just like to yourself even if it is just through reading is a great way. Uh, we've been uh, staying together like at home, uh, doing things together, that way we get that out of our mind. Uh, we've been uh, playing games, watching movies, we've been doing a lot of stuff to get all that out of our mind and stay safe. There are many steps that we could take in order to improve their own mental health, but it all starts with you. You could wake up in the morning and make yourself a good and healthy breakfast. You can start cooking for yourself. You could have more family time, try bonding with your family, your parents, your siblings. If you have any pets, with your pets as well. Another thing I really recommend is finding a hobby for yourself, something that distracts yourself. For example, I got into drawing a little bit more, but you could find any sort of hobby that interests you. You can take care of yourself more, such as 
taking care of your skin and your body or coming up with a skin routine because it'll ensure that it'll make you feel better it'll make you feel good about yourself and it could slowly improve your mental health as well there are many hotline numbers and websites that you could go ahead and reach out to if you ever feel the need to and if you don't know any websites i link some in the description that you could always go ahead and visit anytime there are also many apps that you could download some of these you could keep progress of yourself as you improve on your mental health others you can talk to people anonymously if you need that and here are a few of these apps there's an endless amount of help that you could seek out for whether it's helping yourself improve personally opening up to someone calling someone downloading an app there are many solutions just make sure that you reach out for help and know that you're not alone thank you we hope you found today's presentations informative, enlightening, and meaningful. All of today's presentations and documentaries will be available on Catella High School's YouTube channel after today, so feel free to share with friends and family. We would like to thank the following people and groups. Thank you, Catella High School English Department, for kickstarting these talks. Thank you to Mr. Jeff Newmanville and Mr. Bajan Kazaruni and our student led film crew for producing today's videos and live stream. Thank you, Catella High School Administration district office friends and parents for their support. Thank you to Denise for being my co-host. Thank you Paris for being my co-host. And thank you to all of our student presenters for their courage, ideas, and inspiration. Have a great day everyone and thank you for joining us.